Hi everyone, my name is Xiu, and today I'm going to present the work Be Aware of Your Leaders. This work was done in collaboration with Rati, Lefteris, Zikun, Dalia, Alberto, and Sasha, all of us working at Novi Research at the time. With the, with the introduction of blockchain systems, two new important concepts emerged to the traditional state machine replication settings, leader rotation and chaining. In classic state machine replications, we are attempting to create an immutable sequence of indexed blocks. We do it by having a stable leader, proposing a block, and all other parties trying to agree upon it. This process repeats for each slot. Once the leader is suspected to be faulty, like here at slot 4, it is replaced by a new one. As some of you may notice, this classic approach is not suitable in the presence of Byzantine parties, as a Byzantine leader may prevent the existence of any block proposed by an honest party. This property is usually called chain quality, bounding the number of Byzantine blocks in a sequence. So in blockchain protocols, there are two essential changes. First, we use a rotating leader, meaning that each block is derived by a potentially different leader. Secondly, blocks are not fixed by their index, but rather by chaining. Each block extends a sequence of blocks, for example, by solving some hash riddle. In this work, we focus on the leader election part. We start by formalizing the problem we are solving, which we call leader aware state machine replication. We're going to focus on the eventual synchrony model with the resilience of n equals 3f plus 1. In this problem, a set of parties aim to maintain a growing chain of blocks. A block includes transactions, a link to the parent block, round number, leader ID of the block, and a certificate of 2f plus 1 endorsing parties. This is what you all probably know as a quorum certificate, a quorum of votes with digital signatures on a volume. We use the notation B prime extends B if B is on B prime's history, meaning that you can traverse on the parents from B prime and reach B. Formally, leader aware state machine replication provide the following properties. The liveness property states that an unbounded number of blocks is being committed by honest parties. Secondly, agreement property states that if an honest party PI has committed a block B, then for any other block B prime committed by any possibly other honest party PJ, either B prime extends B or B extends B prime, meaning that they uh, extend the same chain basically. For chain quality that we mentioned, we say that for every block B committed by an honest party, the proportion of Byzantine blocks on B's history is bounded. And finally, a new property that re reflects the main motivation of this work. The motivation is to improve the latency in the common case without Byzantine parties, but possibly with slow parties. We call this property leader utilization, and it states that in the crash only crash only executions, the common case in real life. After GST, the number of rounds for which no honest parties commits a block is bounded. To solve the leader aware SMR problem, we abstract away all other SMR components by defining the SMR framework. We identify three main ingredients for state machine replication. A leader based round or LBR for short, that captures the logic of forming and certifying blocks of transactions in each round. A pacemaker abstraction that take, takes care of the round synchronization among, among parties. And finally, the missing link, the leader rotation component. Let's go over them. So the LBR, the leader based round, provides an LBR API that takes a round number R and the leader leader. And it returns a block with round number R prime that is less than or equal to R. LBR captures an attempt 
by parties to certify and commit a block formed by the leader in that round. And if everything goes well, they all commit a block for that round. Secondly, the pacemaker produces new round R notifications. It ensures that after GST, parties are synchronized and they participate in the same round long enough to satisfy the LBR ROGUS property. And finally, the, the leader election mechanism is an encapsulation that we propose here in this work. It exposes a choose leader API. It takes a round number R and a block B and returns a party P from the set of all parties. It is locally computed by each honest party at the beginning of each round. The following algorithm shows how to combine all of these ingredients to create a leader aware state machine replication. We start by uh, defining it, the commit head to be some Genesis block. Then we do the following. Every time the pacemaker produces a new round notification, we elect a leader for that round using the leader election mechanism. With that leader and that round, we call the LBR, trying to create a, a new block for that round. This LBR always return a block. Maybe not a new one, but it always returns a block. And then we check. If the new block extends my commit head, I commit the new block and update the commit at the corner. If it doesn't, I'm just moving on until the next run. So how does one rotate a leader? In this work, we seek for a leader election mechanism. The challenge is to do so without relying on consensus to agree upon the next leader since consensus itself acquires a leader. Let's start with the Stroman solution. Well, usually systems use round robin mechanism. Each block is proposed by the next in line party. This method is great for chain quality. It assures that all correct parties have a fair chance to propose blocks. However, round robin is not so great for leader utilization. That is, for the common crash only execution, this naive approach is far from being optimal. Let's imagine all these people in the frame being parties, and the great ones are the ones that have already crashed. Using round robin at each iteration over the set of all processes, we will choose, among others, the crashed ones. Such runs are guaranteed to not derive the progress of the protocol. So let's find a better solution. In this work, we present Carousel, a leader election mechanism that provides two important properties. First, it keeps electing correct parties, making sure that we have a non-zero chain quality. And secondly, it is guaranteed that in crash-only executions, the number of 40 leaders elected is always bounded. So how does Carousel work? Well, at the beginning of each round, each party asks itself whether it committed the block for the previous round. Then it can go in one of two paths. If it did commit a block, then it uses what we call reputation. Our main goal in general is to avoid choosing uh, crush leaders in the protocol. Recall that in each block, in, there, there are among other details, a set of 2F plan, plus one in dozer. We take advantage, advantage of this information. So here we have the set of 2F plus one in dozer from the bl block B we committed in the, in the previous round. Since the 2F plus one parties have participated in forming block B, the block for the previous round, we know for a fact that they have not crashed by round R, meaning that in this interval, they lived and participated in the protocol. This raises the possibility of choosing any of these endorsers to be the leader for round R. We know for a fact that they have not crashed yet, this provides us with leader utilization. 
This is only if all parties were to go down the reputation part using the same uh, method to choose littles. Well, is it that simple? Well, not quite. We still need to make sure that not only Byzantine parties are elected. Byzantine parties can always be part of the set of 2F plus one endorser and put themselves in the list in a way that provide uh, the only possibility of them being elected as leaders. So we need to take care of that in order to provide chain quality. So what we do is as a second step, we exclude the F latest leaders of committed blocks. So now the F latest leaders are being grayed out and the, the previous elected one that was Byzantine here on the right is now not an option and the crown pass on to the next opportunity to the next candidate, sorry. We thus achieve both leader utilization and chain quality. But again, this is only true if all parties were to use reputation. What happens if a party did not commit a block for round R minus one, which can always happen, right? Because if we have a Byzantine leader, it may not create any block. So in that case, a, an honest party We'll use a round robin fallback and we'll elect the leader for the next round using round robin. However, we, we face a challenge here because some parties may choose leaders using reputation and some may choose them using round robin. This potentially compromises the liveness of the total state machine replication. However, we managed to prove in, in the paper that the number of rounds for which no honest party commits a block is bounded by order of F square. And we prove that at least one honest block is committed every five F plus two rounds. While the algorithm seems relatively simple, the proof is far from being trivial. Finally, we turn to implement and evaluate our solution. We want to make sure that it really works, not only on paper. So we implement carousel on top of hot stuff, modifying the leader elector module to use carousel instead of the traditional round robin. Then we deploy a testbed on AWS using instances across five different regions and compare carousel to the baseline round robin approach. In the first graph here, you can see both throughput and latency changing with time. When we crash a single party every minute until a maximum of three. The blue line here and down here represents carousel, while the orange one is the round robin approach. We can see that while round robin doesn't perform well under the crashes, for example, in here, here in the throughput, we can see that every time it keeps electing crash leaders. While it doesn't perform well, carousel remains steady, both in terms of throughput and in latency. It always remains low. Next, we observe the following L graph. This illustrates the maximum load of the system. It presents performance of hot stuff with both carousel and round robin, with a set of 10 parties suffers none, one, or three crash faults. The baseline round robin hot stuff suffers a massive degradation in throughput as well as a dramatic increase in latency. We can see, for example, that with three faults, carousel provides 20 times throughput increase and about five times latency reduction with respect to the baseline round robin. This is this dashed line here and here. So this is the round robin with three faults. This is the carousel with three faults. You can also see the more faults we have, the lower the throughput here in carousel with three faults and without any faults. This is in great part due to the losing the capacity of faulty parties. Finally, we also check both leader election mechanisms in ideal conditions, meaning that we don't have any faults. And still, we witness that even in that case, carousel increases throughput over two times. This 
uh, is due to the fact that Carousel has the benefit to focus on electing performance leaders. Leaders on more remote location that are typically slower and respond slowly are elected less often. To conclude, we provide in this work a new leader aware state machine application framework that formalizes a leader utilization requirement and one that suits real life needs. We introduce Carousel, a novel reputation based leader rotation solution. And finally, we test our solution, a lot of implementation fitted with Carousel. Indeed, it demonstrates drastic performance improvements. Thank you for your time. <laughs>